when you go through water and you have a long jilbab like mine, you want to keep your jilbab dry, you pull your jilbab up. That's what she did. When, when she came to Suleyman's place, she thought she is going through a swimming pool or something or water. So she raised up her jilbab. Suleyman told her, this is a palace that's made of glass. So she, she, she thought it was water. So she raised up her jilbab to keep it dry. And he declared that this is a palace made of glass, which means what you're going through is a reflection. What is the rule on eating the meat that is not slaughtered by a Muslim? If it is slaughtered by a Christian or a Jew, we are allowed to eat it. If it is slaughtered properly, and uh, you are delving into an area that requires lots of other questions and answers. So I'm going to go through them very quickly. First, how do we know? We'll come back, man. How do we know that, uh, that the Christians of today are the same as the Christians in the past? We know it by their proclamations. You see churches everywhere, people are saying Christianity, Christians, God, uh, Jesus, all of this, right? So we know that the society in which we live is by majority population is a Christian society. So this is how we make a judgment, okay? If you were in China, that issue will be completely different because the vast majority of people there are not Christian or Jews or Muslims. So you will have to be very, very careful where to eat and what to eat. Okay? Yes. The meat in the store is presumed to be American meat. American meat, how do we evaluate that it fits either category? We, ma we make the judgment. Muslim scholars say you judge si this situation by the overall bulk community which is the majority of the community are Christians, right? Maybe it will raise another issue, which is, but sometimes Christians would slaughter in the name of Jesus, right? But the vast majority of people, when it comes to uh, being adherent to Christianity, as we think of adherence to Islam, they do not adhere to these rules anyway. So the vast majority will not slaughter in the name of Jesus. The vast majority, they slaughter in the name of the FDA. They want, they want the FDA to approve it, that's the point. So they go by the rules, and the rules of the FDA, more or less, are consistent with the Islamic rules of slaughtering. The question was, when somebody comes, and he stands in the line behind the Imam, and the Imam engages everybody in the prayer, but he, that person, is praying by himself. He has his own raka, his own sujood, his own everything. That's, that's disturbing for the lion, and his prayer is not correct. This is not correct. No? This is not correct. The Imam is meant to be followed. فَإِذَا كَبَّرَ فَكَبِّرُوا فَإِذَا رَكَعَ فَرْكَعُوا فَإِذَا رَفَعَ فَرْفَعُوا فَإِذَا سَجَدَ فَسْجُدُوا فَإِذَا رَفَعَ فَرْفَعُوا وَإِذَا سَلَّمَ فَسَلَّمُوا So you follow the Imam in every motion. You never compete with the Imam. You never race with the Imam. You even never move along the Imam. You have to be after the Imam. Okay, Muhammad. Oh, you mean when did it start fasting? The second year in Medina. Okay. Second year after migration to Medina. Yes. Barakallah. The, I'm sorry. The question was, when did fasting start in Islam? The fasting of Ramadan. And I mentioned that it is the second year of Hijrah. When the Prophet went to Medina, two years after his arrival, the, the ayat came uh, to fast Ramadan. Yes. 
he's asking about the hadith in which the Prophet وسلم, says that if anyone misses the Jum'ah prayer for three consecutive Fridays, then his heart will have a dark cover over it. And he's asking, what does it mean? It means his heart will be so much difficult to absorb anything or to reflect on anything or to help in anything. You know that the heart is the, is the heart of the human function, physically and spiritually. Okay? So when the heart is sealed, there is nothing to penetrate through the heart to either make sense or to help the person think right. Okay? What happens to a righteous person when he dies and he is buried? What happens to him in the grave until the day of judgment? Well, first of all, we need to recognize that this is part of the world of the unseen. And this is part of Alam al So whatever we have of information, it has to be rooted, anchored in either the Quran or the authentic hadith. Okay? So let us talk about some hadith on this. The Prophet says that once a person is buried, few minutes after his burial, the angels would come and seat him up and will ask him, Who is your Lord? Man Rabbuk? What is your faith? Madinuk? And what do you say about the man who has been sent to you as a prophet? So these three questions he has to answer. This answer is not going to be the result of intelligence or manipulation or deception. If his works are good in this life, Allah will enable him to give the right answers. My Lord is Allah, my faith is Islam, and Muhammad وسلم, is the prophet that Allah sent to me. Okay, this is the first initial anything. Next to that, some people Unfortunately, may Allah protect us from that. They will be put to torment in the grave. Okay? The Prophet وسلم, in another hadith was going by a grave and he said, This guy is being tormented and he is tormented in a matter that we think of as trivial. He did not get cleaned nicely after using the bathroom. He neglected his cleansing of himself after using the bathroom. So he's saying, we think this is trivial, but this guy is being tormented for it. Okay? وَمَا يُعَذَّبُوا فِي كَبِيرٍ Yeah, فِي كَبِيرٍ which you think it's not Kabir. Yes. Yes. When, when you pray, when you pray at home, you can go as far as your your thigh and your abdomen should be spread apart and your hands should be put next to your head under your shoulder and your elbows should be spread about. When you pray in the masjid, you do not take any space beyond your space. So you don't spread your head and legs or anything beyond the space that you have in your area. Okay? That's the difference. Yes, we, we asked about this several times, we'll repeat. The, the three madhahib, other than Imam Malik, they say that passing in front of a person praying, by passing itself, it disrupts the prayer, okay? But Imam Malik has a deeper reading of this issue. He says, you disrupt the prayer if you disrupt the prayer, which means, if I am standing reading Al-Fatiha and I want to make Rukua and I see you passing in front of me and I hesitate to make Rukua, I don't want to clash with you, so I will stop. That's disrupting my prayer. Likewise, if I want to make Sujood and I see somebody passing and I wait for him, that disrupts my prayer. Okay? But Imam Malik says, but if you pass in front of somebody, and his distance is protected, it's okay. All else, they say, if you pass after the place of his sujood, it's all okay at all times. So the question is for 401k. 
do you pay zakah every year or do you wait until you collect the money and then pay it off all at once? If you do the latter, you will undermine the, the interest of the poor because you owe the zakah every year if the money saved is more than the zakatable level. But the zakah becomes due once the zakatable level has elapsed one year, which means once you reach the zakatable level, which is a value of 85 grams of gold, once you reach that threshold, you count the year from here. And that's why many brothers are asking, do I make my zakah in Ramadan or Muharram? Or I say, you make your zakah when it is due. You make your zakah when it's due, which means as soon as the year elapses, after the threshold of the zakatable level, you must make your zakah. So I would urge everybody to be cognizant, to be alert, to be attentive to the fact that the zakah money is not my money. It is the money of the poor in my control. I am only a trustee to deliver it and deliver it in amount and on time. Thank you. Okay, I think my time is up. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah wa hamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nistaghfiruka wa natubu.